Today, we've seen the release of a lot more leaked information about the new upcoming DJI Goggles N3, and within this information is a lot of interesting detail. So, it's time to go for a deep dive and have a look at exactly what these goggles appear to be, and more importantly, who they're going to be ideal for. Now, before we get into it, I just want to say a massive thank you to Jasper over at X27. I'll put a link to his website, his Twitter, his X, whatever we want to call it, all of his social media profiles below. I would not have been able to make this content without the support from him so please do check him out as well he is the one who has been helping get all this information out there and i just want to say a big thank you from me to him for supporting me with making this content Okay, now here is the first of the images that leaked last week. This is showing us what the goggle looks like. It's definitely a cross between the V1 and V2 goggles and the Integra or Goggle 3. It's probably fairer to say V1s and Integra because they are the first of those generations that look like that. As you can see, it has that V2 style on the front, and whilst it doesn't have that removable front panel, it does have that look. It has that battery on the back, though, that we've first seen on the Integras. It has the more Integra-style control, and it's definitely a hybrid of a goggle compared to what we've seen from the others. If we then shift forward to the second image, this shows us it from the back and this gives us a better indication of the lenses. There is no adjustable lenses here, but you can see that there are large apertures on either side. Our understanding is that that's for a single large LCD and we'll see more about that when we move through the spec. You can see we've got the face mask foam and then the flaps down here like we've seen on the goggles 3. It does look like when you look at it from the back that the battery cable may be removable it may not it could just be a newer connector than we've seen on the goggles 3 but it does sort of imply that it's separate and the cable isn't running through the strap like it was on the other goggles this is probably far simpler from an assembly perspective for dji as well it's going to cut the cost down of the manufacturing because they don't have to thread that cable through the strap and do all of the difficulties around that now they simply have the cable along the outside more budget but easier to assemble as well we also have this other image from the back as well which shows us the back end from the side not a great deal more here but you can see this foam on the side just show just how thick this is i also have a separate image of this as well it looks absolutely massive hopefully this is actually going to make these goggles very very comfortable from an external perspective you can also see we've got our usb port at the top here our sd card our power button and our controls and really externally that is all there is to show you where things now get particularly interesting is when we start looking at the write-up from dji and then the technical specifications now this we believe is the description again it's come from jasper at x27 this this appears to be a direct cut out of the manual you can see here that dji say dji goggles n3 into the sky when paired with the neo and the avata 2 and the rc motion 3 the dji goggles n3 let you soar through the skies and enjoy immersive flight experience now i'm not going to read all of this in between but the first thing to notice is this they're being very clear that these goggles are for the avata 2 and the neo there is no mention of any other products at this time it says you can easily unlock the aerial acrobatics of the neo and let the goggles n3 immerse you into a thrilling experience now blah 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 key features immersive flight experience ready to use 1080p ultra wide screen dji 04 transmission ar cursor 2.7 hours max operating time now if we shift forward we can see it talks a bit more about the integrated face design, one tap defogging like we saw on the other goggles. It wasn't one tap, but we did have the defogging feature. But now they say there's a one tap defog. We've got information about the display 1080p ultra wide screen. So it features 1080p 60 hertz LCD screen with a 54 degree field of view. Now, the first thing to take on board there is that this is a 60 hertz display. It is not 100 or 120. What this means is that these goggles will not support the low latency modes that we see in 03, 04 
on the Avata 2 and not so much the Neo because it doesn't have them. But the very basics are you are not having the 100 frames a second display modes here. You are limited to 60. That doesn't mean you won't be able to use the 100 frames a second modes. But what it means is you are not going to get the lower latency on these goggles like you do on the Goggles 3, the Integras, the Goggles 2 and the V2s. For instance, the V1s and V2s add 120 hertz screens on the V1s and 144 hertz screens on the V2s, whereas this is simply limited to 60. 04 full HD video transmission. They talk about it having a two transmit, four antenna design. I have been digging into the FCC docs and it appears to be four antennas in total. So they're using any of the four to transmit, but only up to two of them at the time. And then all four to receive. It doesn't appear to have the six antennas like we see in the Goggles 3 with the extra pair in the bump at the top. Does support 1080p 60 frames a second live feed, but again, we're limited to that 60. And what they are saying here is with a minimum latency of 31 milliseconds. Now that number is quite interesting because in my personal latency tests, 04 isn't quite as quick as 03, but I have seen it lower than 31 milliseconds. I suspect on my bench testing, when we come to testing these goggles, and we will be doing that, that 31 I probably won't see. We'll probably be talking 33, 34, 35. I tend to find that my numbers come in a little bit higher than DJI's. DJI's are most likely a theoretical number based on RF timings and their testing rather than the actual latency testing like I do. With regards to range, they do say it supports up to 13 kilometers and it works on both the 2.4 and 5.8 gigs band. So you're getting full dual band 04 here. It does also say it supports a vid maximum video transmission bitrate of 60 megabits a second with SyncSmooth technology. That SyncSmooth we first saw on the Goggles 2 and they brought it into the Goggles 3 as well. Think of SyncSmooth a bit like FreeSync or Adaptive Sync on your PC monitor. The idea is to synchronize the camera to the display to basically have a smoother delivery of the frames. Finally, moving to the last page of the info, we have the AR cursor like we saw on the Goggles 3. You've got real-time live view feed shearing, which is via a cable, so it doesn't appear to have the Wi-Fi functionality, panorama video playback, and 2.7 hours of time. Now, alongside the blurb, we also have what appears to be the deeper technical specifications. So again, these goggles are based off an LCD screen with a resolution of 1920 by 1080 and a size of 3.5 inches. So it is a single display, 3.5 inches, but again, maximum refresh rate of 60 hertz. There is no IPD adjustment on these goggles. It is not available. They simply say it is ready to use immediately. Diopter adjustment is also not supported, but they can be used with your glasses as well. And again, they shear the field of view is 54 degrees. With regards to video playback, they say it'll support MPEG-4, H.264, H.265, panoramic, real view display not supported, built-in battery, and it supports micro SD cards up to 5112 gig. With regards to the video transmission side of things, so these goggles are based on the new S2 chipset, which is 04. It supports 2.4 gigs, 5.2 gigs, as well as 5.8. The 5.2 gigs will only be used in the EU. In the US, for instance, you'll be using 5.8 or 2.4, and that is full 5.8 and 2.4 for video transmission. Unlike 03, which limited itself to 5.8 gigs for video transmission only, and 2.4 gigs was used for goggles, telemetry, and remote control signal, although it could use 5.8 gigs as well, only goggles telemetry and remote would go down to 2.4 if needed. On 04, it can use 2.4 gigs for everything, but it's worth remembering that there is no RC control signal in 04. It is now all baked into the main control link, so you now only have video and goggles telemetry. With regards to transmission power, they're saying on 2.4 gigs up to 30 dBm on 5.1, 23 dBm and 5.8, 33 dBm. This appears to be all the same pretty much as we've seen on all of the other goggles. Nothing really here to be concerned about. With regards to latency, this is where things get quite interesting. They do talk about it with the Avata 2. They're saying 1080p, 100 frames a second mode, you're going to get a minimum of 31 milliseconds. And on the Neo in 1080p, 60 frames a second mode, you're going to have 
have about 58 milliseconds. Now again, with this latency number, this is going to be higher than what we've seen on the Goggles 3, the Integras and the Goggles 2, as well as the V2s, because you don't have that higher refresh rate available on the display. This doesn't stop the Goggles working with those high latency modes, but basically DJI are going to have to do some frame dumping to be able to display it correctly on the screen. With regards to video transmission distance, they're saying with the Avata 2 in FCC, 13 kilometers and 10 kilometers in CE, and with the Neo, 10 kilometers in FCC and 6 kilometers in CE. Bit rates are pretty much the same as we get on the Goggles 3, so 60 megabits a second on the Avata 2 or 50 megabits a second on the Neo. It's interesting they've reduced it on the Neo because technically the hardware is the same, the chipsets are the same, it's only the camera that's different, so it's a clearly a restriction that DJI have decided to impose. Pose. Now, what I did find interesting is there was a Wi-Fi spec in here on the goggles. In my FCC dig, I didn't really find too much about Wi-Fi, but it does appear to be the case here in these specs that Wi-Fi is listed. And then they go on to talk about the battery. So, in the end, the Goggles N3 are a budget goggle, but they're really not designed for the existing FPV community. We have a goggle that features a single 1080p display with a refresh rate of 60Hz. What that means is higher latency compared to the previous goggles. Just to give you a comparison, when using the Goggles 3 on the Avata 2 in 100 frames a second mode, DJI state the latency of about 24 milliseconds, and that same spec is now going to be 31 milliseconds on the new Goggles N3. The reality is these goggles were always designed to be an accessory for this, the DJI Neo. Whilst DJI does support the FPV community and bring products for us, the driving force has always been consumer drones. They are always about bringing new people into our drones, new people into FPV and selling us things is not going to be a big enough market to warrant putting in a huge amount of time and development. And in the end, it always comes down to things like this. This product was always an accessory to get people who buy this to spend more money on a set of goggles or entice more people into FPV by selling a package with this drone at a lower price than they've ever been able to do before. The chances are what you will see now is the Neo release with these goggles and you will also probably see a cheaper version of the Avata 2 package available with the goggles N3 as well. You will notice in this specification that I've talked about today, there is no talk about support for O3. So here and now, I don't believe these goggles will work with the O3 ear units, the original ear units. I wouldn't expect the original ear units to ever work, but I was expecting O3. There's nothing in the specs that doesn't necessarily 100% mean it isn't there, but as it isn't mentioned, my suspicion is, as based on the specifications, that it will work with the Avata 2 and the Neo only. With regards to the future and O4, well, the reality is, 04 isn't here today yet. It is a little bit delayed or at least still in development as I understand it. DJI are still working through some issues. They don't have a fixed release date in mind for the 04 system, but they do want to release it as soon as possible. But until they resolve the issues they're having, they're not willing to do it. As for what those issues are, I still don't know. Although my suspicion is the issues are more around the light ear unit than the Pro. We know the Pro is out there in some people's hands because we've seen images, but there has not been a single leak on the light at this time. And my suspicion is the light is probably what is bringing some complexity, but they want to make sure they release both at the same time to drive themselves into new markets of FPV. You're going to have 04, which is going to offer higher end option than we have today in 03, but the light option that is very much designed to compete on price point with the likes of the lower end ones from the Avatar HD system. Now, one last thing just to mention on 04, after Sunday's stream, I spent a bit more time messing around with this app that allows you to measure. And here, I believe, is as close as we're going to get to figuring out how big this 04 ear unit is. My belief is it is an 18 mil spacing on the screws on the side here. And if that is correct, that will give us a 20 by 20 mount and a 25 by 25 mount. And then that would give us an 04 ear unit size of 33.8, roughly say 33 mil, 33.5 by 33.5. Now, this isn't fact. This is 
based on the information that we've been able to gather out of the image. But this is about as close as I've been able to get to coming up with what I think is a realistic look at what the actual size of this O4 Pro ear unit is. As I've said already though, we have no information on the light. At this moment in time, it's not even been seen and that's where I suspect DJI is having problems. With regards to where these goggles sit in the DJI product lineup, well, the reality is for FPV users, the best goggle you can buy today remains to be the Goggles 2 and Integra. Those are the goggles that offer the widest compatibility, although it should be stated that there is no guarantee that Goggles 2 or Integra will get support for the new O4e units. Whilst DJI did add support for the Avata 2 on those goggles, we are a little bit down the line and we now have a new goggle releasing and it would make more sense for DJI to want to push people towards buying Goggles 3 and Goggles N3 then supporting existing users. Although you should never forget DJI's standard marketing setup and that is that they release a new product with a new accessory that they only work together on. They allow all the people who are willing to spend the money on buying everything again to do so and then when the sales start to drop off they then start looking at bringing compatibility for that new product with older accessories and then that helps bring the sales up of the new product again. So if you want me to be a betting man, my money will be at release. O4 will only work with the Goggles 3 and the new Goggles N3 and maybe six months down the line DJI will add support on the Goggles 2 and Goggles Integra although I would not expect support to come for the V2s it is the end of the line for these so if you are using them it is going to be time to upgrade but right now isn't the best time to be buying a set of goggles. Until all of this settles, I'd be waiting to see where things land. But we are also, from an FPV perspective, heading for a breaking point where these goggles, the Goggles 3, do not work with the original ear units. These were the first ones that didn't. The new N3s, almost certainly won't work with the original ear units either. So if you're someone with a mixed setup, the Goggles 2 and Integra are the best option, but that is only if DJI do bring support for the O4e unit to it in the future. Again, today, none of this is confirmed. So the best thing you can do right now is wait and see how it goes. Now, as for the Goggles N3, well, price point is expected to be under $300. Have seen some talk about $200. I don't think they'll be that low. We're talking about €270, Euros, $250, $230 maybe. I'm expecting sub $300, but we're going to have to wait and see. So in the end, here and now, the Goggles 3 are more than anything an accessory for the Neo and the Avata 2, and it remains to be seen where they'll fit into the FPV lineup as time goes on. Now, I hope you have found this video useful. If you have, please do check out the link to Jasper Ellens on X. I'll put all the links to his social media profiles there as well. Please check out his website. I also want to say if you have found it useful, please consider checking out the link to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. It is only through the support of my patrons am I able to keep making content on this channel. And if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content in the future, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, that's it. That's the mother load. Stay safe. I will speak to you soon.